In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good evening, everyone. You can be seated for a few minutes. You're all very welcome, and in celebrating this Holy Mass of the Lord's Supper, we begin the sacred time of the Easter Trivium, the high point of our year as Christians. As during this sacred trivium, we will celebrate the heart of our faith, the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. But this evening we come together as a community of believers to celebrate the feast day of the institution of the Eucharist. We will call to mind what Jesus said and did at the Last Supper when he did institute the Eucharist. We're also reminded in our liturgy that he washed the feet of his disciples and so gave us a clear example of the way in which we are to follow him in loving service to others. And finally, we commemorate the institution of the priesthood when Jesus gave himself to his disciples in his gift of the Eucharist, calling them to share in his mission to do what he had done. And so for a few moments, in the silence of our hearts, let us prepare ourselves to worthily enter into and celebrate this sacred tritium, placing all our worries, cares, or distractions on the altar of God and leave them there in his hands. And we now join with Jesus in offering our gifts and our lives to the Father for the service of others. And the response to each of our prayer is, Blessed be God forever. <laughs> On this holy evening, we receive into our community the holy oils that were blessed by Archbishop Amen during the Chrism Mass yesterday evening. We present the oil of the sick which will be carried by Ursula. May the sick who are anointed with this oil experience the compassion of Christ and his saving love in body, mind, and soul. Blessed be God forever. We present the oil of catechumens, which is carried by Margaret. Through anointing with this oil, may our catechumens, who are preparing to receive the sacrament of baptism, be strengthened by Christ to resist the power of Satan and reject evil in all its forms. Blessed be God forever. We present the holy chrism, which is carried by David. Through anointing with this perfumed chrism, may children and adults who are baptized and confirmed and priests who are ordained experience their precious gifts of the Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. We present a trophy box, which will be carried by Michael. Lord, Please accept this trophy box for our brothers and sisters in developing countries. This small gesture is a symbol of our Lenten sacrifice. Collectively with all parishes and dioceses together, we can make a huge difference to others in need. We ask your blessing upon all those who work on behalf of the poor and oppressed. Blessed be God forever. And we present a jug and basin, which will be carried by Dylan. By setting the example of washing the feet of his disciples, Jesus was teaching them 
that those who want to be great in God's eyes allow themselves to be less in the eyes of others. A true servant leader offers to perform tasks no one else will do, to serve as Jesus did for the benefit of another shows the deepest level of love and humility. May we also show that deep level of love and humility. Blessed be God forever. I again invite you all now to stand as we acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son, when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love, grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through Christ our Lord.
A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month is to be the first of all the others for you, the first month of your year. Speak to the whole community of Israel and say, On the tenth day of this month, each man must take an animal from the flock, one for each family, one animal for each household. If the household is too small to eat the animal, a man must join with his neighbour, the nearest to his house, as the number of persons requires. You must take into account what each can eat in deciding the number for the animal. It must be an animal without blemish, a male, one year old. You may take it from either sheep or goats. You must keep it till the 14th day of the month, when the whole assembly of the community of Israel shall slaughter it between the two evenings. Some of the blood must then be taken and put on the two doorsteps and the lintel of the houses where it is eaten. That night, the flesh is to be eaten, roasted over the fire. It must be eaten with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. You shall eat it like this, with a girdle round your waist, sandals on your feet, a staff in your hand. You shall eat it hastily. It is a Passover in honour of the Lord. That night I will go through the land of Egypt and strike down all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, man and beast alike. And I shall deal out punishment to all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood shall serve to mark the houses that you live in. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and you shall escape the destroying plague when I strike the land of Egypt. This day is to be a day of remembrance for you, and you must celebrate it as a feast in the Lord's honour. For all generations, you are to declare it a day of festival forever. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. This is what I received from the Lord and in turn passed on to you. That on the same night that he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and thanked God for it and broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this as a memorial of me. 
In the same way, he took the cup after supper and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this as a memorial of me. Until the Lord comes, therefore, every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are proclaiming his death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. It was before the festival of the Passover, and Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to pass from this world to the Father. He had always loved those who were his in the world, but now he showed how perfect his love was. They were at supper, and the devil had already put it into the mind of Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray him. Jesus knew that the Father had put everything into his hands and that he had come from God and was returning to God. And he got up from table, removed his outer garment and taking a towel, wrapped it round his waist. He then poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel he was wearing. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, At the moment you do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Never, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus replied, If I do not wash you, you can have nothing in common with me. Then Lord said Simon Peter, not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus said, no one who has taken a bath needs washing. He is clean all over. You too are clean, though not all of you are. He knew who was going to betray him. That was why he said, though not all of you are. When he had washed their feet and put on his clothes again, he went back to the table. Do you understand, he said, what I have done to you? You call me Master and Lord, and rightly so I am. If I then, the Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you should wash each other's feet. I have given you an example so that you may copy what I have done to you. The Gospel of the Lord. In your mind's eye, try and picture the scene of this sacred meal. It should be a joyous occasion. But unfortunately, it is overshadowed by betrayal and misunderstanding for Jesus. He knows who is going to betray him. And even when he says out loud, one of you will betray me, 
the disciples do not fully understand what he is saying or what is happening. Worse yet, in St. Luke's account of the Last Supper, we find a tragic sentence. An argument also began between them about who should be reckoned the greatest. The misunderstanding is further added to when Jesus starts to wash their feet and again they fail to comprehend what is really happening with Peter being the prime example when he says, you shall never wash my feet. What must have gone through Jesus' mind at this time? How did he feel? How would you feel? Have you had the experience of being betrayed in any way? And if so, how did you react? Or have you ever failed to understand your friends when they were in trouble and needed your support? Or have others shown you by word or deed that they do not understand your actions or way of thinking? And if so, how did you feel or react? Yet despite the pain Jesus may have felt at this, he still demonstrated his perfect love for them by accepting the betrayal and misunderstandings and taught them and us one final lesson. As teacher and Lord, Jesus sums up his whole life and kingdom in a humble gesture of love and service. Jesus kneels not before an altar, but before his friends and washes their feet. But the washing of the apostles' feet means two things. Firstly, as I already refer to, it involves Peter's reaction to this. Jesus can wash the feet of all the others if he likes, but not his. Peter will never allow Jesus to wash his feet. But we must remember Peter's protests come from the love and respect he has for Jesus. As only a slave would be expected to perform this task. He meant well. However, the truth is that he still hadn't understood what Jesus is about. Everything Peter had said up to this point was about what he will do for Jesus. But Jesus had not come into the world so Peter could do something for him. He had come into the world to do something for Peter. Jesus came not to be served, but to serve. Likewise, faith is not about what we can do for God. It is about what God does for us. And this truth is symbolized in the most powerful way possible on this night by Jesus washing his apostles' feet. And that includes Peter. And it is so important that we remember this every time we come to Holy Mass. We celebrate this evening the institution of the Eucharist, the first Mass. But the danger is that when we come to Holy Mass, we can make the mistake as Peter did. We think we are doing something for God. But that is not what is happening here. Holy Mass is about a Father, God, who in Jesus empties himself out and pours himself out for us. 
It's about a God who comes to us under the appearance of bread and wine to give us strength on our pilgrim journey on earth and gives us a promise. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. And that's all God asks of us, is that we let him love us and do this for us. The second thing about this action is that we could say if Jesus had only told us, wash each other's feet, we could easily ignore its implications by claiming he could not have meant it literally. But what we have instead is the Son of God first kneeling to wash the apostles' feet and then decoding the gesture for us himself when he said at the very end of our gospel, I have given you an example so that you may copy what I have done to you. And so nothing could be clearer as he gives us no choice but to respond. In other words, there is no point complaining that the feet are all messed up and dirty. We just have to get down and wash them. And the modern equivalent of washing feet could be to look after our aging parents or grandparents, to be good to our neighbours, especially when there is trouble and they need help, to be tender towards the sick, welcoming towards the stranger, generous towards the poor, helping in jobs that need to be done around the parish. Young people too can wash feet in their own ways by being of service at home and just simply being good mannered. The list is endless for all of us. And so the challenge is set before us this evening. But how will we respond? But always remember, in the washing of the feet, we meet God. And in this way, we return love for love with God, which is what he really asks of us. And now following the example of Jesus, I call our 12 disciples forward for the washing of the feet.
invite you all to stand for our prayers of the faithful. Let us adore our Saviour, who at the Last Supper and the night he was betrayed, entrusted to the Church the memorial of his death and resurrection to be celebrated throughout all ages. Confidence that he will hear us, we pray. We pray for the Church. May our Holy Father, Pope Francis, bishops, priests, and people, continue to support each other in our community and commitment to build up God's kingdom on earth. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. On this Holy Thursday, we thank God for the gift of the Eucharist. We pray that our lives may be enriched by the reception of this great sacrament, and may we always receive it worthily. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for those in need of material and spiritual help. Following the commandment of Jesus, may we not consider any task too menial for us in coming to their help. Lord, hear us. We pray for the sick and the housebound, for those who cannot come to church for the solemn liturgies. May they be with us in spirit and obtain the blessings of these three days of the Tridium. Lord, hear us. We pray in silence for our own needs. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for our dead. We remember especially during this Holy Mass, Mercy Matai, whose month's mind occurs at this time, Anne Marie Cullen, whose first anniversary occurs at this time, Bridie McCrory, whose first anniversary occurs at this time, Owen Dunbar, Rita McParland, Anne Craney, Eileen McNally, Mary Carvel, and Jerry Barlow. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Lord God, since for your glory and for our salvation, you will Christ your Son to be the eternal High Priest, grant that the people he gained for you by his blood may be strengthened by his cross and resurrection when they take part in his memorial sacrifice. Grant this through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest, who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world together with your servant Francis our Pope, and Amen our Archbishop, Michael our Auxiliary Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in the hope of health and well-being, and praying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you had chosen. Be pleased, O Lord, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, 
our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day he was to suffer for our salvation and the salvation of all, that is today, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a solemn way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us. This pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar and high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs.
Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all things good. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And now, as we also recall the institution of the Holy Eucharist during this Holy Mass this evening, I invite our extraordinary minister of the Eucharist present to come forward as they recommit themselves to this very special ministry of helping to distribute Holy Communion during Mass and bringing the Eucharist to the sick and housebound. So all our ministers present who wish to renew their commitment, if you please come forward. Dear friends in Christ, our brothers and sisters are to be entrusted with administering the Eucharist, with taking communion to the sick and giving it to the dying. In this ministry, you must be examples of Christian living in faith and conduct. You must strive to grow in holiness through this sacrament of unity and love. Remember that though many we are one body because we share the one bread and the one cup. As ministers of Holy Communion, be therefore especially observant of the Lord's command to love your neighbor. For when he gave his body as food to his disciples, he said to them, this is my commandment, that you should love one another as I have loved you. The next two questions I ask you, your response is, I am. And so I ask you, are you willing to serve in building up the body of Christ, the church? Are you willing to administer the Holy Eucharist with the utmost care and reverence? Dear friends in Christ, let us pray with confidence to the Father. Let us ask him to bestow his blessings on our brothers and sisters chosen to be extraordinary ministers of the Eucharist. And for a few moments in the quietness of our own hearts, we now make our own private prayers for our brothers and sisters that they may be worthy <laughs> extraordinary ministers of the Eucharist. by Father the Clark to stretch out his hands over them. Merciful Father, creator and guide of your family, bless our brothers and sisters. May they faithfully give the bread of life to your people. Strengthened by this sacrament, may they come at last to the banquet of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, 
that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of power and glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world of mercy. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world of mercy. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
And just before our final prayer, at the end of this Holy Mass, I will transfer the Blessed Sacrament to our altar repose in the baptistry. On this night, Catholics all around the world will take part in a tradition from the very early church, obeying Christ's command to keep watch by adoring Christ in the Holy Eucharist. And so continuing this tradition, I invite you to spend some time after this Holy Mass at our altar repose and pray for the intentions of vocations to the priesthood and religious life, for return to Mass and the sacraments by those who have lapsed, or for peace in our world, especially the Ukraine, and for a Holy Father's intention. And we'll conclude this time of Eucharistic adoration at half nine with night prayer of the church. And tomorrow, Good Friday, there'll be morning prayer of the church in St. Patrick's at 10 o'clock. At 3 p.m. we will celebrate the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ in St. Patrick's church. And then at 7, here in this church, we celebrate Stations of the Cross. But as you leave the church here this evening, we ask you to please do so quietly and reverently in order to respect our Eucharistic vigil at the altar of repose. Let us pray. Grant, almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. <laughs>